This video will demonstrate how to perform spatial join using ArcGIS Pro. The data being used for this demonstration are point data of dairies in Washington State and polygon data of watershed sub-basins that are at least partially within Washington State. A spatial join combines attribute data from two tables into one table based on a spatial relationship between the features that are being joined. So a spatial join is similar to an attribute join, but rather than combining attribute data based on a key field, like we would in an attribute join, for a spatial join, a spatial relationship between the two features that are being joined is used to combine that data. Furthermore, a spatial join creates a new feature class as its output. And uh, in a spatial join, we want to differentiate between the target feature class and the join feature class. The target feature class receives the attribute information from the join feature class. And the other importance of differentiating between target and join feature classes are the output's going to be of the same geometry type, meaning point, line, or polygon, as the target feature class. So let's say, for instance, with the data that we're using, we're interested in um, agricultural runoff from dairies and how that might impact particular watershed sub-basins. So we want to do a spatial join to link information in the attribute table for dairies with the watershed sub-basins. So let's first take a quick look at the attribute tables for the data here. Um, for the dairies, we can see we have you know, facility size, identification numbers, business name, address, um, that type of information. If we take a look at the attribute table for the watershed sub-basins, uh, we can see we have uh, things like area in acres. Uh, we also have the name of that sub-basin, state, and even countries that it might fall within. So for the first part of this demonstration, we'll do a spatial join and say we want to maintain the point data for the dairies, but what we want to add to that attribute table for the dairies is going to be information about which watershed sub-basin each individual dairy falls within. So we want to do a spatial join to accomplish that. And we can uh, start by going to our geoprocessing pane. We can open up spatial join. We see it's listed here under favorites, so we can certainly access it from there. If it's not, we can just do a quick search for spatial join pops up so we can uh, open up the spatial join tool we've got target features so target features because I want the output to be point data for dairies I'm going to select that as the target features and then the join features are going to be the watershed sub basins and uh, here for the output feature class, we can uh, just give this a name. Let's call it Washington Dairies um, Subbasins. And next parameter here we can choose is join operation. So we have one to one, one to many. So we're going to leave this at one to one because each individual dairy only falls within one watershed sub-basin. So we've got a one-to-one -one relationship there. And then here the uh, last parameter that we want to take a look at is the match option here. And I'll click on this drop-down menu. You see a lot of these uh, choices are similar to uh, what we would see if we were using, say, the select by location tool. So this is where we specify the spatial relationship between the two feature classes that we're working with. So for this, I'm going to choose within. So I want to know uh, essentially which watershed sub-basin are each of these dairies within. I go ahead and click Run. And we see that the spatial join's been completed here. If we look over at our contents pane, 
we see that uh, we have our new output, the Washington Dairy Subbasins. So I can turn both of these layers um, off and just have the new output here. If we take a look at the attribute table, we can see we have a join count field that was created. So that tells us um, for each of these um, records, there's been one join. So one sub basin has been joined to each of these dairies. And then we also have information regarding the uh, feature ID for each of the um, dairy points here. So that's our target feature ID number. So we see all of this same data that was contained within the Washington Dairies uh, attribute table. But what we see here is information appended from the watershed subbasins here. So for each of these dairies now, um, we can locate them here in the, in the attribute table and we can also um, have information about which watershed subbasin um, each is linked to. And we can do the reverse here and say we are interested in keeping uh, the polygon data for the watershed subbasins, but we want to add information about the dairies that are contained within there. So uh, we can do a spatial join. And for our target features, we're going to specify that it's our watershed subbasins. For our join features, it'll be Washington dairies. And we can just specify a name here for the output feature class. And for join operation, if we leave this, we leave it at one to one for purposes of this demonstration here. And then for a match option, so say we want to pick within, select that. We see this red X shows up. So if we hover over that, we see um, we get this pop-up box here. So it tell, tells us here at the top, relationship invalid for selected layers. So we can always use this uh, to find out if um, there is an invalid relationship that's being defined here. And we can also read about each of these match options in a little more detail. The more appropriate um, spatial relationship that we can use here would be contains. So we're thinking about these watershed subbasins and the dairies that they contain. So go ahead and click run. Okay, and we can see that the spatial join has been completed. So let's open up the watershed subbasins dairies um, layer that uh, was added as part of this spatial join. And we'll see that we've got each of the original 72 polygons that represent these, these watershed subbasins. But what we have is a field that was added with join count. And so this is because we did a one-to-one -one join. What it does is it aggregates this. Um, so if, um, for instance, say the Strait of Georgia watershed subbasin means with join count that means there were 18 dairies that uh, fall within that watershed subbasin polygon and if we scroll over we also see that uh, there is information regarding the dairies that's been added uh, basically what ArcGIS Pro is doing is listing the information for the first match for each of uh, those spatial joints. So even though, say for the, the Strait of Georgia watershed subbasin, there are 18 dairies that are contained within there. We don't have information about each of those 18 appended in this table. What we can do, so I'm gonna X out of this, and uh, what we could do if we wanted that information is a join one to many. And I'm going to leave all these parameters the same, except I'll just add a, a one after the uh, name of the output feature class just to uh, distinguish between these two. I'm going to go ahead and click run. 
Okay, and the spatial join's been completed, so I'm gonna go ahead here from the contents pane, open up the attribute table. And what we can see here is now we have 348 records. So what that means is that for each um, dairy, a new record's been um, created for the polygon data, and each dairy then is listed here. So this is a, a what we get when we do a one to many. So each of these, uh, each uh, watershed subbasin is is essentially kind of like duplicated in order to match up a dairy for each of them. And we can again see that if we scroll over here and look at the uh, data from the dairy attribute table that was appended here, we can see each individual dairy is going to be listed and it's uh, appended to information about the polygon data for the watershed subbasins. I'm going to close out of this and we'll just go to the catalog and uh, catalog pane here, expand databases, expand out the geo database here. And here we can see that um, we have new feature classes that it were created as part of these outputs. So they not only appear as a layer in the contents pane, but they are actually saved within the geo database as a feature class.